in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's so great to see all of your faces. I decided to take off my mask just so you can see a little bit of mine in the room. Uh, you know, sometimes we're given such richness with the lectionary readings, the way that they connect, the way that they're in dialogue. I, I hadn't brought this up in the 8 o'clock service, but I wanted to tell you something about one of the choices that uh, the preacher is sort of privileged to make when they're given readings. Um, we have a number of translations in uh, our tradition in the Episcopal Church that we recognize as authorized translations. Most often you're listening to the New Revised Standard Version, a very scholarly version of the text. But I asked that we could use the Common English Bible primarily for that amazing passage that Matt read from Ecclesiastes. You may be used to hearing it with the word vanity. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. For those especially who grew up in a tradition with the King James Version, you know, you might be familiar with that. But there's something amazing about hearing in Ecclesiastes this king who's so frustrated about all of his riches going to somebody else saying, pointless. It's just pointless. He kind of drills it in. And then the way that it connects with our gospel reading and how it illuminates it. But I'll get to that in a moment. I want to tell you a little bit about a man named Ernesto Cardenal. He's a Nicaraguan priest and poet, former Catholic priest who established a community of artists and writers and peasants, really, in the Solentiname Islands of Lake Nicaragua in the late 70s and early 80s. This idyllic community, a utopic community, was eventually destroyed by the military. But before it was, Ernesto did something that was at once ordinary and also very extraordinary. Ernesto gathered each Sunday with a group of the people, all of them quite poor by the standards of the world, and they reflected together on the gospel reading. They did church, essentially. But they did it in a way that many Episcopalians, perhaps most of us, might not recognize as ordinary. Rather than having a theologically trained clergy person stand before the congregation, share their own learned perspective, their one perspective, or maybe weaving in the voices of other theological experts, all with the assumption that the, the people will absorb their wisdom and inwardly digest it. Ernesto instead staged a conversation, and he recorded the theological reflections of the people. He captured for posterity the perspectives of a group peasants on the meaning of the good news of Jesus Christ. In a world that privileges the rich, recognizing the authority inherent in the voices of the poor, something that Jesus himself did quite a lot, is extraordinary, revolutionary maybe. Christ is all and in all, Paul tells us today, including and perhaps especially in the voices that are coming to us from the margins of the margins. So we will follow Jesus today in honoring the poor by receiving their wisdom, their witness, and their ministry. I would like to offer you some excerpts from this amazing book that Ernesto created called The Gospel in Solentiname. From chapter 65, which is actually a reflection on today's gospel that we heard, which I think is titled in that book, Riches. So I'll read a little bit 
from the gospel, and then you'll hear some of the dialogue taking place in Solentiname in the late 70s, and the messages they have about this reading. One among the people said to Jesus, Master, tell my brother to give me my part of the inheritance. But Jesus said to him, Man, who put me between you like a judge or a divider? Ernesto, didn't Jesus do badly by not wanting to do justice between the two? Felipe, he was coming to teach us love. If people carried out his teaching, the brother wouldn't steal the inheritance of the other brother. William, he didn't come to distribute the riches. It's up to society to do that. And the sharing ought to be done among everybody, not just between two. In that sharing, they asked Jesus to do the rest were left out. They asked him to sanction private property, the inheritance laws, the status quo, and he refuses. He hasn't come for that. On the contrary, he's come to destroy that social order. Felipe. Jesus was coming to divide all the wealth of the world among all the people. A Protestant from the opposite shore. It seems to me he wasn't coming to share material, but spiritual things. And, and this man wanted him to share material things. Olivia, well, it seems to me that he comes to share material things too, but not just to two people. Because notice that just with spiritual things, forgetting the material things, you can't live. And the spiritual and the material can't be separated. It has to be one single united thing, but not just shared between two people. Because notice if the only thing shared is spiritual, the people will starve to death. Felipe, if you want to achieve a spiritual life, you have to achieve it through material things. Because if I love God, I'm on the side of God. To prove it, I have to do something for my comrades, and share what I have. Be brothers and sisters with everyone. If I don't achieve it in material things, I'm not loving. It's more like I'm hating. From the Gospel. Notice and beware of all greed, for people's lives do not depend on the many things they have. Olivia. Happiness doesn't depend on riches. There are many rich people that are unhappy. Marita, it's the riches that make them unhappy. They have worries we don't have. Ernesto, according to Jesus, it's not just happiness. It's life itself that doesn't depend on the things one may have. Tomas, a selfish person? is dead in the midst of life. Rebecca, the fact that some people have too much of a lot of things, that makes also for lawsuits and wars, and it also kills life. From the Gospel. Then he gave this example. There was a rich man, and his land gave a great harvest. And he thought, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and in them I'll keep all my harvest and all my goods. And I'll say to myself, my friend, you have many things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this very night you will die. And all you have stored up who will get it? That's what happens to the man that piles up riches for himself, but who is poor in the eyes of God. Alejandro. What the man in the parable did is what rich people do now. Keep the money in the bank and take it easy. They eat and drink and have fun like that man. They live in an endless fiesta. 
And they go on accumulating more. They go on exploiting and living happily off the work of others. Like that man in the gospel, because that man by himself couldn't have gathered all those harvests that wouldn't fit into his little barns. He did it with the labor of others. Rebecca, the bad part about wealth is that it makes them poor in God's eyes, poor in love. Olivia, and they're very unfortunate in the eyes of God because the richer a man is, the more he has exploited and then he owes all that money, that sweat he's stolen from the worker. Some are poorer than others in the eyes of God, and the richest are the poorest in the eyes of God. The richest one is the one who's devoted himself to taking from others, so he's the worst. In the poor, for the poor people, he's the poorest in God's eyes. The ones that are the most miserable, Olivia says, those that are most lacking in love are the ones that have the most riches but Jesus speaks of the one that piles up riches for himself. He's, he's not against big harvests. He's against piling them up for yourself. Just like that man did. To keep them and, and rest and enjoy himself for the rest of his life. Neither of those two brothers had a right to that inheritance. All of it was the people's money. Just as it was everybody's wealth that all the man wanted to store in his barns. Who said he could enjoy all by himself that great harvest? He didn't harvest it by himself. Even less inherit it. This book is full of riches. In Luke's gospel, toward the beginning, Jesus starts his public ministry by standing in the, in the temple and reading from a scroll. Do you remember that part of the early piece in this gospel? Reading from the scroll surprised everybody. He reads this passage from Isaiah, where he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to who? The poor. And in the case of Solentiname, it is the poor who have come to proclaim good news to the world in the name of Jesus. So, may the words of their mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in the sight of God, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen.